Minister, last week's decision by Mbor Planala to approve a wind farm at the Redunin and Corriglas along the southern rim of Cork's beauty spot, uh, Guganbara, it's really taken locals by, in Ballingiri very much by surprise. Um, Cork County Council had refused the planning uh, and so had the, the board's inspector. Um, and the, the proposal from the council was a very definite, adamant refusal. Um, the council's planner said that the, the plan would materially contravene the objectives of the county development plan and provide a highly intrusive, visually domineering form of development that debases the integrity and the landscape character. And they were very adamant, the council were. Uh, these towers uh, reaching 178 metres tip height, that they would dominate the landscape um, in, in the area. Um, now, look, there's an acknowledgement that alternative energy sources are needed and that wind energy is going to form part of that. And there's a great many uh, wind farms already built across County Cork, seven of them locally. The situation, though, in Gugambara, it's about the suitability of the area. You, can make, you, you cannot make another Gugambara, but you can find other locations for a wind farm. When you think of Gugan, you're always, you'll see the secluded valley, the tiny little oratory outside in the island, and the, the big tranquil uh, island and the tall cliffs around it, a, an isolated lost valley. And there's a real opportunity to develop the whole area uh, for tourism, right the way down the Lee Valley, uh, from Gugan down the, the Guayra and on to uh, Blarney Castle, for example. And an awful lot of people would have rediscovered the area uh, during the pandemic. Uh, but Gugan had already established its identity uh, well before then. Uh, nationally and internationally. And we want to see tourism being, uh, being developed there. And when Abor Planola uh, went examining the, this application, they would have looked at FALTA studies from 2007 and 2012. Um, but even they weren't satisfied with that. They would have had to supplement it with, 2000, with, with studies from Scotland because the, the other ones would have been uh, so far back. Um, so, really, how much consideration was being given to tourism uh, when this dis decision was being arrived at? The proposed development on the southern slopes of Deridunin and Corriglas, they're right on the rim of Guganbara. And if you imagine Gugan like a, a horseshoe um, with the lake in the middle and the, these towers then on the, on the far side of the cliff, just on the southern side as you approach from the wide Atlantic way from the Bantry direction. To put, to put it in context, 178 metres of a tower, uh, that's the spire in Dublin, that's only 120, Liberty Hall 59. So these towers would be uh, Liberty Hall and the spire on top of it, to give you an idea. That size of a tower, 300 metres above sea level, is going to be seen from a very long distance. So they are going to have a huge impact. Um, the, the local community have been very much against it, and Costa Forba Habela Hungara are now faced with having to put together funds for to possibly uh, take on uh, a judicial review. Minister, the council have identified Gugan and other places, only a handful of places in the county uh, as, as examples are tourist uh, attractions of special quality. The likes of Garnish Island, uh, Blarney Castle and Gugan amongst Thank them. You, so really it just stands out like a sore thumb and we want to ask how did, what consideration was being given to the tourism value of the area? Thank you Deputy Minister Burke. Thank you, uh, and I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Moynihan for raising this uh, very important matter for his community. The Minister for Housing, Local Government and Heritage's role in relation to the planning system is primarily to provide policy and legislative framework under which planning authorities on board Panala and the Office of the Planning Regulator perform their statutory planning functions. The legislative framework chiefly comprises of the Planning and Development Act 2000 as amended and the Planning and Development Regulations 2001 as amended. The Department has also issued planning guidelines under Section 28 of the 2000 Act which planning authorities and the board are obliged to have regard to in the exercise of their planning functions. 
The day-to-day -day operation of the planning system is, however, a matter for the planning authorities and for the Board in relation to planning appeals and strategic infrastructure development. In making decisions on a planning application, a planning, a planning authority or the Board, as appropriate, must consider the proper planning and sustainable development of the area. Having regard to the provisions of the development plan, any submissions or observations received from the public and the statutory consultees, and any relevant ministerial or government policies, including any guidelines issued by the Department. Under Section 30 of the Planning and Development Act 2000, the Minister for Housing, Local Government and Heritage is specifically precluded from exercising power or control in relation to any particular case with which the Planning Authority or on board Planala is or may be concerned. As a consequence, it would not be appropriate for me to comment in relation to any individual planning case or cases. However, it is important to be aware that Ireland has set an increased goal under revised climate action plan of up to 80% of our electricity from renewable generation by the end of the decade. An electricity grid driven by renewable energy sources will contribute to Ireland's greenhouse gas emissions reduction targets by substituting primarily wind and solar electricity generation for fossil fuel electricity generation, as well as displacing emissions in other sectors, for example through the electrification of car transport and residential heat. The Renewable Electricity Support Scheme is Ireland's first flagship policy to deliver on this up to 80% target and to set a pathway to a zero net zero economy. The first renewable energy support scheme auction for onshore wind and solar projects was held in 2020. The second renewable energy support scheme auction process has begun with the qualification application window having closed in January. The auction is scheduled to take place in May with final notice of award in June, three months ahead of our previous plans. It is anticipated that the Renewable Energy Support Scheme 2 will deliver a major increase in renewable electricity generation by the end of 2024. The Renewable Energy Support Scheme programme, including the launch of the second onshore auction and the forthcoming offshore auctions, are a major step in the Government's ambition of reducing emissions by 51% by 2030 and delivering up to 80% of renewable electricity by 2030. Mm -hmm. A uh, cornerstone to the Renewable Energy Support Scheme is the provision or, of pathways for increased community ownership, participation in and benefit from renewable electricity projects. To facilitate delivery of this objective, an enabling framework for community participation has been developed. This framework includes a preference category for community projects to ensure a route to market for communities, a community benefit fund for all projects to ensure benefits are distributed to local communities with, which host these projects, and lastly, a suite of supports like information toolkits, trusted intermediary advisors and financial grants to help communities develop their own generation projects. Furthermore, a support of spatial planning framework for onshore renewable electricity generation development is crucial to the delivery of the electricity targets set out under the Climate Action Plan. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Deputy Moynihan, please. Thank you, Minister. And um, look, I, I note that a great deal of your response, in fact, almost all of your response, is focused on the need for energy uh, and climate action needs. And yes, there is, there is definitely uh, a recognition on that locally, uh, from locals, from the planning authority, uh, widespread. There are places that are more suitable for different uh, uses and you would have to recognise that surely tourism is uh, to be considered there as well. Um, Gugan, for example, would have to be a standout area for uh, tourism. And look, just because there's national policy there to approve uh, wind farms, it doesn't mean that every single application that, that comes in or that even unsuitable locations would be uh, encouraged for, um, for wind farms. Gugan must surely be recognised as being more suitable for tourism. And the board, uh, the council was very adamant on it. The board's own inspector uh, recognised that. You, you cannot make another Gugan. It's not, a, it's not an option, it's not available, but you do have so many alternatives uh, for wind farming. Uh, Minister, Khrusha Anun Arfad, Armwint and Nahata, Agustina Gafurlahan Arfud and Down, Darira, Grakadigan Bor Planala, and Irtisha Gugan, Vian Korlakunte Glananai, Nirvraha de Grevenata Runa Kanekar, 
agus vid ar glanan aig. Um, Glachem id leis gavil gá le fuin si fuin a ve exula agus gavil gá le gai. Ach ta aht na nach vil arunach agus ta sian oing encounter uh, more impler guga an agus glan an li a orbert a gort chasorot. Uh, ta sian is aruni a gort chasorot uh, na mar uh, hasha a gort gai agus mar sian. Um, Kursha Grilsha Gamur or Winter Nahata, Ni Feder Gugan Ele, Yanov, Akhtar Rauna Own, Mother Le Lefunov in Naguihe. There are alternatives available. Uh, we already carry a great many wind farms in our community. Yeah. There is a recognition that there is a place for it, but Gugan surely should be recognised. The Council recognise it, yeah, Fall yeah. to recognise it. Surely there should be a recognition from Borplanala. Uh, and I don't feel that they gave any consideration appropriate Mr. to Burke. tourism. Thank you, Cahirlach, and uh, I thank Deputy Moynihan again for uh, his concern of local residents that you're articulating in Gugan. But as I'm very clear in terms of my role under Section 30 of the Planning and Development Act, I'm unable to comment on specific cases, and that's clearly enshrined in legislation. The reason in terms of the guidelines and the energy targets that I was articulating was trying to set a context of where the government is coming from and its direction of travel. But I would say that in terms of this project, uh, and Board Panala has clearly set out in his report uh, the reasons for granting the decision. So it's worth having a look at that and reviewing it and taking it from the own context of the decision. But unfortunately, in relation to operational issues, uh, I can't get involved or comment further on that. Thank you, Mr. Burke, we now move to...